Hello everyone, this is Etho, and welcome back to Feed the Beast, guys. Uh, today, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a wrap-up of the PvP map me and BW have been making here. It's basically done. I think we're, we both have our parts done to it, pretty much. I just got a couple last things I want to do, and maybe today we'll do a few polishing touches to the map, make things a little nicer around here. Um, but yeah, it's it's about done. The main thing we've been working on lately is the kill streak system. Um, this is what B00's been doing. This this part of it, uh, he's building these underground pipe systems. <laughs> I guess you would call them. Uh, each of these dispensers holds a different bee with a different effect, and there's six different bees in total that give us are six different kill streaks. If we check my computer here, the six kill streaks are nausea, which you get after two kills. A three kill streak, you will get blindness unlocked. Four is poison. Five is a damage effect that will hurt people slowly over time. And then there's also a fire effect. And the most powerful one we call the nuke, which is like damage, but people die very quickly from it. So it's going to be pretty cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's been doing this part of it. Uh, what this does is it makes a, a bee shoot out, goes into a transposer into an apiary. When the bee's in the apiary, um, it's, it causes its effect to spread out a certain area. And then, actually let's start up and hope we don't die. So this is a blindness one. So a blindness bee went into that apiary. And then after a certain amount of time, these kick in, these two receivers. One of them is for a block breaker. This one here. It's going to break this apiary, and the bee is going to fall out. The apiary goes through this pipe and to the deployer. You might have just saw it there goes to the deployer and then the deployer tells it to place it again and the B falls down into that little one by one by one area there and this obsidian pipe sucks it up because it's being powered and it goes up to the correct dispenser above and it's ready to go again so it's a pretty cool little system he's got these placed throughout the map underground um, split into three different sections. Uh, there's the A, B, and C section. So there's one over here. Um, I think he made like 18 of them or something. So this is this is the A section here. Pretty much everything in this area, uh, anybody in that area will get affected by the bees. Then you, he's got this little divider line here, so you can see where the next section starts. So this would be B section here. And if you're in this section, you'll get affected by a B kill streak. And then another divider. You can just barely see it. Uh, this is the C section here. So if you're in here, somebody uses a kill streak on the C area, then you'll be affected. So uh, that's that's what he's been up to, and that's been taking a long time because you have to breed hundreds of bees, and they each take a very long time. <laughs> it's a big process. Uh, what I've been doing is the, the programming part of it. I'll just run you through my program real quick. Um, what this program does, it allows people to log in and, and choose their teams. So, actually, I'll just start it up. Let's go to Killstreak is the name of the program. All right, so it's running. So for people to join the team, they type join green team to join the green team then it gives you a message Etho has joined the green team um, if I try to join it again it says Etho is already on the green team if I try to join the blue team Etho has left green team and joined blue team and same thing so it's pretty cool you can switch teams easy with it I decided to do it with chat instead of the player detector thing because like originally I wanted to have two player detectors, one on each side of this divider, but there's no way to tell. How do we get in here? 
<laughs> I always forget. I guess you have to go through here. Oh, stuck on a light. Still stuck on the light. The problem with having a player detector on each side of this glass is when you click it, it doesn't tell the computer which side you clicked it from, I don't think. So uh, having two detectors is no different than having one. So that didn't that didn't work. So the easiest way of doing it is by chat, I think. Um, with my program, it will it'll announce to you whenever you get a kill streak. Hey, back. And then to use a kill streak, all you gotta do is type in like. Um, you can do it this way. You can type like if I unlocked a nausea, I would type in nausea, and then I could use it at area A, B, or C, and just type it something like that. Did you sleep? Oh, why did Pacrat join a team? Uh oh. Okay, I got a glitch. <laughs> um, I can sleep. That was very weird. Um, the other way you can activate a kill streak is instead of like typing in the blind, blind A if you want to use blindness, you can just type in A, B, or C, and it will use. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I slept. A, B, or C, and it will actually use the kill streak. Your your best one, and uh, you don't have to specify what kill streak you want to use that way. So it's just a lot easier to type it out. So this beautiful rainbow you see outside of the computer is not just for looks, believe it or not. Uh, this is used to control the dispensers for these killstreak things. Uh, the map is divided into three sections, and there's six different types of killstreaks. So three times six is 18. We need 18 of these transmitters, these wireless redstone transmitters, uh, to control all the different dispensers for these kill streak things. So that's what that's for. And I'll just scroll through my program here for you to look at. It's not quite done as we saw there was a glitch just there when Pack Rat spoke for some reason. So I'll have to go through here, uh, modify a few things and and whatnot. But this is the general program. Um, this is for managing kill streaks for people joining teams. Because I want the kill streaks linked to their their player, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, anybody could use a kill streak for anyone else. You want to make sure it's linked to their player, and uh, only the person that earned the kill streak can use them. And that's about it. So it's 170 lines, give or take. And that's about it for the for the rundown here. I did want to do a few things today too, so let's get to that. Uh, I don't know if I ever showed these actually. Uh, after our last playtest, we kind of realized it was hard to tell when somebody was capturing a point, so we put these lights above um, for for each of the teams. There's wireless receivers in there, so when you go on a capture point. takes a second. Oh, there we go. It starts flashing up there. You can actually see who owns it, a capture point from pretty much anywhere in, on the map because it's way up in the air. It's easy to see. Um, captured it. Blue stays on now. If we go to green, the green one will start flashing here. It should. I almost think there's some visual update issue with it because it's so far away. Although that really looks like it's not working now. Huh. Let's try a different one. That one's working. Okay, maybe the receiver got changed or destroyed or something. I'll have to check that out after. Uh, but what I want to do today, first up, I want to start polishing up the map, so let's get these computers moved. 
Uh, we, I don't want them just out on the lawn, spread out. Uh, I think what we'll do, let's build a room underneath here to house the computers. So I'm gonna dig out a little area down below here if there's space and put them down here. Oh, we can actually see the grass now. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, we still have the field of heads there though that keeps growing and growing every test we do. Um, B double O, he left me a book, thankfully. This is nice. He left me a book with all the codes I need to enter to those transmitters. Each of these numbers relates to uh, one of these dispensers for each of the three different areas. So uh, I, I did move the computer into a room down here, just over here. It's nice and separated. Don't have to worry about mobs getting to us down here. And this will work out fine, I think. So yeah, these codes, I got to enter into these transmitters. See how they're all at zero s still? I need to enter those. Um, according to the order I have set in the computer there, which I know it's not going to be tough to do. So we'll do that. One thing I think we really need to do with this build, we did that practice game a couple days ago, well a few days ago by now, and uh, learned a lot from that. One of the things that was a little worrisome, uh, Dotdam spent about a week, a week getting seven stacks of these charms of keeping. These allow you to keep your your bow and your arrow and stuff when you die. Uh, and in just one test with six people, we ended up using two stacks <laughs> in in just a short time. So I think these are going to be a problem uh, to keep up. We're going to run out really quick. So we need a different solution for that. When we first started making this game, we thought our bows and our and our swords and stuff we're gonna have enchantments and our, we would have armor with enchantments that we didn't want to have to keep remaking every every death but with that test we did we just had bows and arrows and it, it went pretty good so I don't think those are even really necessary we just need to set up a dispensing area and then maybe we'll use those for special game modes where you have a certain amount of lives or something instead that way they'll go a little further uh, so I want to set up a, a dispensing area, and I think we should also, I have a bunch of soul shards here, I think we should try to make a skeleton spawner around here to refill on arrows, so that's not a problem. We need to set something up so that we can make bows really easy, and then a dispensing area to give us all that stuff. So I'm going to try hunt out some skeletons for this. Um, it's daytime, that's not really good. Hmm, there's not a single mob anywhere on the map. Doesn't matter if it's night or anything. Nothing is spawning, because people have chunk loaders everywhere, and then there's mobs that pick up stuff, and I think, uh, that's what happens. <laughs> there's persistent mobs that never despawn, stuck in chunk, chunk loaded areas, but luckily... I found this, and hopefully this will do what we need it to do. Right by our map. And it doesn't look like anybody's been here. Alright. Oh. Ho ho, sharpness five. That's an enchantment I don't think you can even get. Uh, it only goes up to sharpness four, I'm pretty sure, so that's pretty cool. Ah, and that's what I was looking for. There's a skeleton spawner and a zombie spawner. We want the skeleton spawner. And hopefully it works with the soul shard thing. I'm not sure if it does. I'll try it out. Because there's no other way of me getting skeletons, it looks like. Do, 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 do. Come on. Spinning. Come on. <laughs> um, maybe he wants more privacy? I don't know. Let's block this up. Oh. Okay. Are you going to work? It worked. Good. So we can use mob spawners to get them. And people have told me there's a trick where you can just 
combine them with anvils. So I'm going to need a bunch of these and try to combine them into a tier 5 spawner that we can set up at the, the map there. Let's block this off. Get a little darker here. Oh, I didn't switch. Oh no, I did. Good. <laughs> so I'm guessing that would make a tier 2 if I combine those. We'll see. I'll, I'll fill up all 7 of these and bring them back to my base. What happens if you have seven on your bar at once? Oh, it filled up two. Oh, that's cool. And we're at my home base now. Let's try to combine these soul shards I got. See if we can do something with them or if they fix that. Okay, so two... Oh, those are zeros. Two of those will make a tier one. I'm guessing we can't combine it like this. Oh, you can. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's easy. That's tier two now. It does get more and more expensive as we go. I think because they're damaged items, like they're counted as damaged items, and then Andals let you fix damaged items. Ooh. Uh, tier two. Tier three. Hmm. That doesn't make it go up. It does add to the killed number, though. It's 370 right now. That makes it 493. So it is going up still. That's good. 617. Just about there. Might need to go get a few more of these. Probably almost out of experience. Oh, a little bit more. Do, do, do. And yeah, it's just a lot quicker to do it this way. I'm not going to go try to kill that many skeletons, especially if they're not spawning on the map. Empty. 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 Oh, that's it. Alright, well, I'll finish this up off camera, I guess, and we'll try set something up. There we go, I got it made. Tier 5 skeleton spawner. We want it tier 5 because it's super duper fast and also we can control it with redstone. Uh, I'm just going to try it out in this tree here to make sure <laughs> I did it right. Uh, I think what you do, you place the cage and then the shard inside, so let's put it right there. Shard goes inside and I can pick it up after, no problem. <laughs> okay, that's pretty quick. We'll get lots, lots out of that, I think. I wonder if they drop anything, like any bows or stuff, stuff like that. Power it, it should stop. Um, it's hard to tell. Yeah, I think it's okay. <laughs> Alright, so we got that made. Now, for these rooms, we need to figure out how we're going to do this. Uh, dispensing station. Probably against one of these walls, uh, either this one or this one, that's where we'll set it up. Uh, let's build... Let's go back to the lawn. <laughs> it's the best place to build stuff around here, or to test stuff out. Let's... Let's do this. I think this is what I want to do. Um, I made some filters. Oops. Did not mean to do that. Made some filters and some transposers and some barrels here. I think what we'll do is we'll have... Is this the right way of placing? No, it's not. Gotta go from this way. So we'll have one transposer for like a sword, if we do a sword. Uh, one for a bow. And then we'll use a filter for arrows that will dispense a whole stack at once. Then we'll put the barrels on top of that. Like so. And then all we would really need is redstone along there, and that should activate all of them uh, once that gets powered. And I'm just going to set up so that people press a button, and then these shoot out the, all the stuff they need, and then they can go. Uh, it's probably the best way. If I did a pressure plate, I think people would walk on it several times before they go out. So all the arrows we get from the skeleton spawner, we'll pipe to these, and then... Uh, we'll set something up for making bows here too. I want to try this out. Uh, I made an auto crafting table. 
let's put it at, oops, at the middle one here. I think if we, if we do it like this, and wooden pipe below, facing the other way, we want the other way. This tool is so handy. And we're going to want a chest for on top. Oop. Doo -doo -doo. I sure do miss the drag drop <laughs> crafting uh, from from 1.5. Uh, we're still in 147. Oop. What am I doing? Okay. So th we'll have a chest on top of that. And I brought one of these pipe stuff out. So if there's something in the auto crafting table, we'll make it go out into the barrel. And so all I think I need to do then is give it the recipe. Oh. Let's get some sticks here. Alright, so bow recipe. Cool. And then if we give it all the ingredients it needs to make the bows, then it'll just auto do it, I think. So if, yeah, so it's going. <laughs> so that's a really easy way of doing the bows, keeping them full. You just got to give it string and sticks and it'll do it on its own. Um, I wonder with the swords, we probably can't storm enchant it, could we? Yeah, that might be a problem. But uh, that's about it. So let's make a button here just to try this out. And do we have any arrows around? Okay. Is this the filter? Yeah, it is. Okay. So people will hit a button. And they'll shoot out, and then they'll just go walk, pick it up, go to the teleporter. It's not the ideal way of doing it, but it's it's pretty good, I think. Yeah, this idea is working pretty good. Uh, what I ended up doing is just extending our spawning rooms here by like three blocks or so. Uh, put the teleporter over here. Gear up station is over here, and I'm just putting some finishing touches on stuff. Cover over these if we want. Uh, maybe B double O will change this around so it looks better. <laughs> That's what uh, I count on him for. Um, not not that anything's wrong with this. It's fine like this too. So yeah, you press a button. Bow and arrows dispense. If we put a sword like the a theme, this is what we were planning on doing. The theme thing. Um, we might put that in this other barrel. And I tried it out. We can put an enchantment on it and have it stack in the barrel as long as whatever's in the barrel all has the same enchantment as each other. So that'll be fine. It would be a bit more painful to make it than like the bows and stuff though because you can't... Well, there are ways of auto-enchanting stuff, but it's tougher. Um, get this on here. Items in inventory. Good, good. So, I really like this setup for the bows though. It's so, so easy to get a ton of bows. Check this out. Do do. It's going right. Yeah, <laughs> look how quick it is too. That's cool. Just have to keep it supplied with string. String is not too hard to get. Um, gonna hook up a skeleton uh, killing machine up to this pipe, and it'll it'll fill both the arrow barrels up. I hope, as long as they don't fully empty, should be fine. And we'll probably want to get some barrel extensions on these two because six, 64 stacks isn't a lot, really. Um, if everybody grabs a stack every time they die, it will go pretty quick. Uh, teleporters. Is it working good? Oh yeah, and I changed the power setup underneath. Uh, you cannot connect these power tables to the teleporters directly. You have to have MFSUs right next to uh, the teleporters because they pull tons of power all at once. So it, it drains from these three that are all around it. And the way it's set up now, you don't even see these. Uh, with the other setup, you could see the MFSUs in the ground and it didn't look too good. 
we have two ultimate hybrid solar panels that uh, B00 has supplied. Light can shine through the micro blocks and that keeps uh, this powered, which is pretty good. And it should be able to keep up, especially with this big buffer, because this is 60 million uh, power right off the, oops, right at the start. <laughs> oops, dang it. Plus the uh, solar panels have uh, internal storage as well for the power. What do these hold? One million. That's not too bad. Uh-huh. So this is going well. Uh, I think next video we're going to do another test, like with uh, get a bunch of guys together and hopefully uh, try this out with kill streaks enabled. Should be a lot of fun. And yeah. <laughs> uh, with the new Minecraft server starting up, the new map and all that, I'll probably be playing Feed the Beast a little less and that a little more because that's where the people are going to be. And uh, I plan on being on the, the vanilla server for for quite a bit once it's uh, booted up, which should happen any day now. Um, a couple of people have been wondering where I've been. I haven't been posting too many videos. I have people visiting at the moment, and I'm also going to be going away Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So <laughs> video amounts have been at a pretty, pretty low at the moment. But I'm going to try to get a couple videos uh, ready before I leave, and hopefully it won't be a huge huge gap between not having any videos for you guys but uh anyway that's going to be it for me for today i'm going to keep working at this and i'm sure bw will well i think he's pretty much done it's just me <laughs> i'm holding him i'm holding up the show uh, so i'm going to keep working on this and i'll see you guys again next time bye bye